Hi everyone, Goodness Guineas here. I hope you've all had an absolutely lovely Christmas. Today I'm going to be doing a video, it's one of my new Simply Explained videos, which I will be uploading once a month and it will cover a topic all about guinea pig anatomy and physiology. In today's video we're going to be talking about the digestive system and as a guinea pig owner I think it's super important that we all know how guinea pigs digest their food. The reason I think this is because the better we understand our guinea pig's body the better we can take care of them. So this is a diagram of a guinea pig's digestive tract. It's pretty anatomically correct so for anyone who's used to looking at one of these diagrams um, you should know what everything is and where they should be in a guinea pig. Um, but if you don't, don't worry because we're actually not using this today. I'm going to show you the diagram that we're using now. I've colour coded this very basic diagram that should make it clear which organ is which. So starting at the head of the guinea pig, you can see a blue tube that I've drawn. This represents the mouth or also known as the oral cavity and the esophagus. In the mouth, Food is chewed and mixed with saliva. It is then passed down into the esophagus by contractions of the muscle wall called peristalsis. The red shape in this diagram represents the stomach. A guinea pig stomach is similar to our own or a horse's. It's comprised of a single compartment unlike ruminants which is comprised of several compartments. However, unlike humans or dogs, Guinea pigs will not be able to vomit if they ingest something toxic to them, meaning it will have to pass through the entire digestive system. The reason for this is that guinea pigs have a flap of mucous membrane at the top of their stomach, making reflux impossible. The fluids that are found in the stomach contain acid, so your HCl, your hydrochloric acid, and also enzymes such as pepsin, uh, which are produced in order to break down food such as proteins into amino acids. Food spends a relatively short time in the stomach, where by then it is passed on to the small intestines. The food that's then passed from the stomach into the small intestines, the pancreas secretes enzymes to break down starch into sugars and fat into triglycerides and acids, aided by gall produced by the liver. The small intestines is the main site of absorption. So this is where your proteins, starches and fats will be absorbed into the body for use. At this stage, you're probably wondering when fibre is going to be digested as it's such a vital and crucial part of a guinea pig's diet. Well, fibre is actually left undigested until it enters the hindgut, which consists of the colon and the cecum. The cecum and the first section of the colon is quite large. Um, they occupy about in between 50 to 75 percent of the space in the guinea pig's abdominal cavity. So how are fibres fermented? Well, basically what happens is, first of all, these fibres need to be sorted out into what is digestible and what is indigestible, so what can't be digested. So there are large indigestible fibres uh, that are found in the diet uh, of the guinea pig, such as lignin, which is found in hay. This is a structural uh, aspect of the hay. Uh, this part is passed on out to the colon, as it can't be digested. And the small digestible fibres, such as hemicellulose and cellulose, are passed into the cecum for fermentation. The simplest way I can explain this is that good bacteria in the cecum need three factors to survive. For this good bacteria to survive, it means that the cecum needs to be in a stable environment, meaning that there needs to be the right oxygen tension, it needs to be at the right pH, so it can't be too acidic or too alkaline, and also it needs to be of a certain temperature to make sure that this bacteria thrives and grows. These good bacteria produce energy and this energy is volatile fatty acids. What the bacteria does is it uses this energy for reproduction and growth and any excess energy that is left over is then used in the guinea pig's body. As a guinea pig owner it's vitally important to ensure that our piggy's diet stays consistent, meaning that we don't drastically change any aspect of their diet and this will help stop gastric disturbances. Gastric disturbances may cause our piggies to become ill, so it could cause our piggies to get diarrhea or scours, colic, interception or gastric torsion. And in many cases, unfortunately, if not treated soon enough, it can be fatal. Moving on from the cecum, we look at the colon, which is the pink part of the end of this diagram. So the colon is part of the large intestine and this is basically the end part of the digestive process. Basically what happens in the colon is its function is to reabsorb any fluids and to just um, prepare the waste products to be expelled from the body. From the colon, these waste products are then moved along to the rectum to be expelled. Guinea pigs produce two different types of stools or poos. 
So the first type is the one that we all know. It's the brown elongated poos that we're constantly sweeping up or cleaning out of cages after the guinea pigs. And the second type is a type that we don't actually see um, or very seldomly see as the guinea pigs eat these directly from their bum. Uh, these poos are called cecotrophs. They're rich in protein and vitamins, and in particular, vitamin K and vitamin B. So it is vital that guinea pigs do eat these poos, as if they don't, it can cause digestive upset. Pigweek and Blueberry are currently devouring hay at the minute and being very cute and distracting while I'm supposed to be doing some college work. So hopefully my simply explained video of a guinea pig's digestive system was helpful. If you like my video, please leave a comment or simply like the video. And also don't forget to subscribe to my channel to keep up to date with my piggies and also my new videos. Um, during the week, I will be uploading a daily routine video of what I do with my piggies. I'd also like to thank everyone who subscribed to my channel so far. It's really nice to see everyone taking an interest in my piggies. So that's all for me. Bye from Goodness Guineas and her cheer little piggies. Bye!